Welcome back to Midpoint. Former CIA operative and intelligence analyst, also part of Concerned Veterans of America. It's a pleasure to welcome Gary Bernson back to the show. Gary, let's clean up the Cuba thing here real quickly with regard to what action the president took. In your opinion, then, does it weaken our intelligence any? Does it help us any with regard to stopping much of the crime that you just talked about that Cuba's involved in? It, I don't think it will help us in the least. It will enrich the Cuban leadership because as tourists come in, they own the hotels, their military owns the hotels. I don't see this as helping the people very much, and, and um, we're not in a position to sort of leverage this to sort of for, for, for great effect. This has been a very bad deal. There's a thinking process here that this was the time to pull the trigger. Of course, many Cuban Americans we've spoken to said, wait three months, wait four months. This would have happened on its own. But there's others saying that this goes back a year and a half. This didn't just happen overnight, that Raul Castro has been doing this for some time. It was his only way out because of what's happening in Venezuela. Their money is drying up. So indeed, there are those saying, shut it off, wait, and it all would have worked itself out. But Gary, I ask you this with other people saying, 54 years and it hasn't worked. So why would we think that it would work in another couple of months? Well, let me just say this. The pressure that we put on them has worked. Where they were doing military campaigns against us in Central America and terrorism and all these other things in other places, it's reduced. If you go back to the 19, late 1970s, the Cubans were on the ground with military forces in Angola, in Mozambique, in Ethiopia. They were out there side by side with the Russians attempting to overthrow our system. They have now been reduced to a banana republic. And I don't think that we needed to do much more to help them. We should have just waited. Is the president, in your opinion, then, and others somewhat foolish for this? Makes him look rather foolish in basically going up and kowtowing to Raul Castro? He looks weak in this. And, you know, the, the president had an ideological reason for doing this, but we got nothing in return. All right, two other things that catch us now when it comes down to intelligence, what's happening around the world. First of all, in Russia. Uh, as a matter of fact, I read today that Google is now worth more than the entire Russian stock market. Their dollar is plummeting. They're in big trouble now. Is there a concern on the intelligence community's side of things that maybe Putin might start selling nukes, start selling weapons, might actually become a bigger monetary player in other countries? I don't think he would do that, but let me just say this. This is very dangerous, what's happening in their economy. And, 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 and there's no way that Putin would be selling nukes, but I would say this, that Putin, if his con economy continues to deteriorate, and if we take further actions against him, and he has nothing to lose, it may incentivize him to act in uh, possibly against the Baltic states. Because we're not going to go to nuclear war over this. He won't believe that. And if he thinks he has nothing to lose, he could park several divisions in one of those states, like Estonia, Latvia, or uh, Lithuania, and the U.S. would be very hard-pressed to stop him. But are we then and caught so, in the middle here? Because we really can't sit here and prop him up. We can't give him money and make his economy it, any stronger. I think we need to get him to the table as quickly as possible, because you don't want to destroy the Russian economy in the process of this. We need a negotiated settlement on the Ukraine. And, uh, and, and the sooner we do that, the better, because if their economy becomes, if it, if it starts to collapse, it becomes dangerous for everyone. All right, let's go ahead and then look at North Korea. Quite frankly, Gary, let's speak plainly. Did America get caught with its pants down here and we weren't ready? We could have prepared. We didn't because now we have a bunch of computer hackers. It is indeed state-sponsored terrorism and we weren't ready to defend ourselves. Well, you know, the, there, there's a great book written a couple of years ago called Cyber War by Dick Clark, the former National Security Council chief of counterterrorism, where he talked about the United States having an excellent offense but horrible defense. We need to defend the grid in the United States, electric grid. We need to defend the Internet. Along the Internet, there's a spine in the United States. We need to put defense in there. But in America, where private enterprise is separate from government, there's a gap there. There's a gap in coverage, and we in the government can't convince private sector and compel them to, to, to do more on their security. It will change the dynamics going forward of film, political films, uh, and uh, clearly Sony buckled under this. And uh, I agree with the president's statements that people should just go to the movies. Are we they almost getting to out? the point? Are we almost getting to the point right now where we're going to let North Korea and others censor our films and our entertainment? That's what Sony has just done. With Sony doing that, what's the message, 30 seconds, that we send to other nations about willing to bend over? That we are easy to blackmail. That is the message they have just sent. 
And, uh, and the president's statement is that they shouldn't bend, that we should put this out, everybody should go to the movies, that every theater in the country should show it simultaneously. Uh, but they're not going to do that. Uh, Sony is on its heels because of the release of the emails. They just want to move on from this program, this uh, this problem that they've got as quickly as possible. In just 10 seconds, there was no intelligence that indicated that this was going to be any sort of a great terrorist attack because of this movie, was there? I, I don't think so. Look, the North Koreans can do the hacking. They have an awful intelligence service. They're good at kidnapping people from the shores of Japan and bringing them back and making them slaves to teach their intelligence service, English and Japanese. But their global reach is not very good. There their we intel go. service is awful. Make that the last word. Gary Bernson, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. We'll talk soon. Great pleasure, Ed. Short break and Midpoint continues.